Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please try to excuse the pandemic hair that's going on. Um, obviously, this is in the middle of COVID, and I'm uh, trying not to get out, including to the barber. So thank you in advance for overlooking that. Uh, one of the most popular videos I did on this particular channel, uh, sorry about the noise, Crow decided he was going to talk over me. One of the most uh, viewed videos I did on this channel was talking about my experience with Zyrim. Um, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, especially if you view my other videos, I am diagnosed with uh, narcolepsy. Um, now, I have had some complications come up. I'm um, seeing a new doctor that wants to confirm that it really is narcolepsy, and she's got some other theories, I guess, but um, for right now, that's my diagnosis. That's why I take Zyrim, which is a sodium salt of GHB. Uh, so the first video that I made was very optimistic. I, I believe I made it the first morning or the second morning I woke up on the Zyrim, um, and I felt like a totally different person. Since then, I've had a lot of people comment and ask for an update. Um, I assume people that have found the video uh, because they are looking at going on the drug themselves or have somebody in their life that is, etc. Um, so that was early January when I started Zyrum, and it is now uh, early to mid-August. So about eight months of experience. So the first month I was on it probably was the absolute best that I felt. So I was having energy daily, I was getting up at reasonable human being hours, uh, going to bed, you know, usually not later than midnight, being up between seven and nine. Um, I was having energy uh, out here. I, um, my other YouTube channel is firearms related and I actually was digging out a berm by hand. Um, so I was shoveling dirt, loading it up, uh, building a berm with it. Uh, and that was probably about a month into the Zyrum. Shortly after that, um, I just started noticing bit by bit that I was not feeling as great as I had. So I was getting back to a little more fatigue every day, you know, a little less enthusiasm, a little more brain fog. And that's a trend that unfortunately has continued pretty much throughout my experience with Zyrum. Um, so as far as doses go, the highest dose I ever ended up on was 3.75 twice a night. Um, now, if you're not aware, you typically start at 2.25 twice a night, and then the highest you might go uh, for most people is 4.5 twice a night. Um, so the highest I ever went was 3.75 and it was not a good feeling being on that dose for me at all. Um, I was waking up anxious. Um, in fact, I was anxious waking up in the middle of the night um, taking Zyrum the second time, um, because if you're not familiar, you take it uh, right as you're going to bed, and then four hours later, typically two and a half to four hours later, um, you'll wake up and take it again, your second dose to cover you through the rest of the night. Um, so even when I was waking up for that second dose in the short time I was awake, I was having panic and anxiety. Um, I was having depression. I was having just uncomfortable thoughts, not like self-harm or anything like that, but just like weird, uncomfortable, dark or gross thoughts that were just like coming into my head. Um, or even just being afraid of those thoughts would lead to other things. Um, and it just felt like it did not put me in a good state of mind at all, and that is a potential for Zyrum. Um, it's something that your pharmacy will follow up with you on uh, regarding any changes, um, and if you have a history of depression or anything like that, um, that'll be part of your screening to determine if it's still um, a good thing for you to take the Zyrum because it can cause changes in mood and uh, thoughts and things like that. So I ended up at 3.0 for a while and um, got to the point where I was tolerating it well. And as far as classical narcolepsy symptoms, they have absolutely improved. Okay, so I'm not really having um, sleep attacks so much anymore. Um, I am not having cataplexy, um, although there's some 
unclear conditions around my cataplexy in the first place, um, what might have caused it because I was withdrawing from another medicine at the time that actually can cause cataplexy. Uh, but nonetheless, whether I do have it or not, I haven't noticed it. Um, sleep paralysis, I haven't had since I started Zyrem. Um, nightmares, way less frequent, and it's almost like you're so out of it during your dose um, that when I do have nightmares on Zyrem, it like, doesn't bother me because it's so far away in your head, if that makes sense. Um, like sometimes you don't even remember it until something triggers it and then you get just faint images of it. So all of those things quality of life wise, um, they did get better with the Zyrem and haven't come back. So that's a major success. And if you're somebody who suffers really bad from a lot of those, then that's huge for you, obviously. Um, I tend to fall on the spectrum where I don't have as many sleep attacks, but I had horrible um, hypersomnia. Um, I guess not the worst, there's people who had it worse than me, but 10 to 14 hours a day was normal for me, and uh, a number of days I would hit 15, 16, 17 hours of sleep. At first, Zyrem was amazing because I felt no drowsiness, no fatigue, no compulsion to sleep. Um, more than eight hours, it started to get to the point where I could wake up after my eight hours and roll back over and sleep for another three hours. And I can still do that any time. And you have to avoid that because you get good ordered sleep on Zyrum and then you go back and do your regular and uh, then you're not getting good sleep anymore. It, act it actively undoes um, what you did the first part of the dose. So I, I just got to this point where, you know, maybe um, like the Epworth sleepiness scale is something they use to judge how sleepy you are and they ask you the likelihood of uh, dozing or going to sleep during different activities like reading a book, watching TV, um, you know, all that stuff. And I was at this weird point where I could have scored zero because I never seemed or very rarely seemed to actually fall asleep without control. But man, I could have done it at any time. I could pick any point in the day and go right to sleep. I was thinking about sleep all day. I was craving sleep. Um, my attention, my focus, everything was short. Um, and it's still, unfortunately, been a lot of that way. So Zyrum has been a mixed success thing for me. Um, and it doesn't mean it will be for you. And it's not been um, a bad experience for me, um, except for one thing that I do want to talk about. Um, so obviously since I have a firearms related channel and uh, I'm a gunsmith and I've been a machinist, I've done a lot of work with my hands um, and typically had pretty steady hands, but um, I started to slowly get this tremor to the point where if I were to pick up an object, say like this, you know, I can hold this, there's a little tremor in my hand right now, you might could see, but uh, there was a point where if I was holding this like this, my hand would actively be tremoring like that. Um, I mean, I'm talking about having a drink, picking up a box, it was anything that required any uh, muscle control. My hands would just start, you know, it might be a little tremor, or it might be to the point where I was actually rattling the contents of the box. Um, and uh, it, it, I just couldn't do anything in any type of physical stimulation, like holding a tool or something, just made it worse. Um, at first, I blamed it on stimulants because, you know, I went from armodafinil to modafinil to Adderall. And then I got off all the stimulants, and it kept going and getting worse. And I finally saw a neurologist, and she told me, you know, that's an essential tremor, um, which basically, if I understand correctly, you, you have your um, sympathetic nervous system uh, controls a lot of reflexes. And when that runs too much on high, that's when you get things like uh, essential tremor. Um, and like I said, as you can see, I have a, a little in my right hand, and that's unusual for me. I was at 3.0 on the Zyrum leading up to that. Um, I discussed it with my pulmonologist, who was my sleep specialist at the time, and the neurologist, and I dropped to 2.25, and within two days, the tremor was gone. So almost conclusively, that's something that the Zyrum caused me, and that is listed as a side effect, um, I believe somewhere in the range of 1 to 5% of people um, can develop tremor on Zyrum. So that's something to be aware of if you develop that. Um, it can be the Zyrum causing it. And unfortunately for me, 
that means that I've been at 2.25 ever since. Um, so that's basically where I'm at right now. I'm still taking Xyrum. I still am better off having it than having not had it um, now that I don't have the tremors. If the tremors had continued to worsen, I might not feel the same way, but um, I'm still experiencing pretty significant fatigue and drowsiness. Uh, I've started to have just the smallest amount of hypnagogic um, hallucinations come back. Excuse me, um, if I wake up and I'm falling back asleep, um, that's when I might hear like far off conversations or um, I'll hear someone I know say my name or something like that. If you don't have narcolepsy and you're watching this, you probably think that's insane, like schizophrenia or something. Um, but it's it's something that anybody can have and uh, is very common in narcolepsy because it, it actually has to do with the crossover from uh, waking conscious to dreaming consciousness. So it's not something I have in daily life. It's something I have where I'm on that threshold and a lot of us do. Um, so, you know, to recap, a lot of what could be debilitating symptoms are much better. So for that, um, I have to say I'm, I'm still better having been on the Xyrum. Um, I haven't had a true sleep attack since I've been on it. I, I have nodded off a couple times, but um, it's always been in quiet situations where um, I could have avoided it by getting up and doing, you know, it wouldn't have happened if I was doing something active, but I do end up nodding off. Um, there have been days where I've gone back to sleep and taken naps for several hours in addition to the Xyrum. Um, and just in general, while I'd say I've made strides in terms of my fatigue and everything, um, it's, it's never been as good as the first month was. Um, and if I could get back to that point, I'd be ecstatic. So um, that's been my experience so far with Xyrum, you know, eight months on it. Hopefully this has presented a pretty balanced view of what I've dealt with on it and what I feel like some of the considerations and stuff are. I still think it uh, represents a lot of hope for a lot of people, especially since um, for a while I couldn't take any stimulants uh, because I discovered I have another issue with tachycardia that the stimulants made worse, so it was just Xyrem for me. And it is the only medicine that actually contributes um, to restorative sleep and to getting your brain physiologically in a better place than without it. Um, you know, you have stimulants that um, help you to push through it, and then you have non-stimulants, um, eugeroics and uh, histamine agonists and things like that, again, help you feel awake and bypass that sleepy cycle. But if you have fragmented sleep, or like me, I get 0% deep sleep um, without Xyrum, then it's the only medicine that's actually going to help you catch up and do any better than you're doing currently. So I still think it's a great thing. Uh, just obviously it's natural frustration when something that starts out well ends up not being the whole solution for you or as good as you hoped. Um, so thank you for listening. Uh, if you did spend this much time to get through the whole video, I hope it did help you, um, whether it's make decisions or find someone with a similar experience to you or whatever. Um, I do plan to talk more frequently about narcolepsy and um, in general, um, I guess you could say chronic fatigue of a sort and, and just living with things like that. Um, you know, things I've experienced and maybe that I find help or have picked up from other people. Uh, if you're interested in anything like that, uh, do consider subscribing. Now, this won't be the only topic I cover on the channel. Um, you know, I, this is basically my secondary channel for all the things that are important to me and uh, I enjoy particularly media and things like that. So I can't promise you'll uh, share the same interest in me and everything that you find here, but I do plan to spend more time talking about um, this condition, things I go through and things that I find helpful. So anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed it or learned something and uh, I hope to see you around another time.